Give it a little, give it a little. <laughs> All right, Charles, time to be serious. I'm Jason with Engineering Explained and... Hey, I'm Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. And in this video, we're gonna be explaining how direct shift gearboxes work. And we're gonna be starting with the clutch. Two clutches, in fact. Oh, and we're wearing gloves because Charles is gonna get his hands dirty and I wanted to feel included. Yeah, we, we gotta make sure Jason fits in, so... Uh... <laughs> You're looking good in those gloves, by the way. It's a little dangerous. Usually I just deal with whiteboards and they're very safe. Do you need gloves for whiteboards? You do you get like a little I do on get, your... Yeah, okay. I get a little a little fade okay. on my hand and I have to on. take a shower afterwards to clean up everything. That is but too much. I don't know that everyone it's needs a lot of work. to know that about you. <laughs> All right. Anyways, back to the clutch. All right. So this is actually the dual clutch pack out of a Volkswagen transmission. This particular one came out of a, I want to say a 2013 Passat. Normally, this isn't something that I'm able to keep. Um, it has a core charge on it, but... But you stole it. But I did not steal <laughs> anything. Um, nothing was stolen in the making of this video. Sure, okay. Uh, this, actually, the customer hit something, and uh, I was yeah, able to... the customer hit something. Yeah, I was able to keep this. So this is really cool. Um, we're excited to kind of explain how this works and show you guys all about the dual clutch. So this is the clutch housing, and this is going to be rotating with the flywheel. In this case, it's a dual mass flywheel that this bolts up to, and both clutch packs are inside of this, So, and these are multi-plate clutches. So I'll let Charles explain what's going on in the inside here. So basically what happens is there's two, like Jason said, there's two clutches. There's an inner and an outer clutch. Uh, Volkswagen calls these K1 and K2. K1 controls the odd gears, and K2 controls the even gears. Now, there's a, an electronic unit that controls the fluid flow to this, and what it'll do, even though this entire mass is rotating with the flywheel, it can lock one or either the inner clutch or the outer clutch and rotate one of two input shafts to the transmission. So we're looking at the overall gear set of this transmission. You can see it's basically a manual transmission. This is our two input shafts. You can see that I'm rotating this one independent from this one, and that's where the, that's where the dual clutch comes in. One clutch controls one, the other clutch controls right. the so other. Right, so this is two separate shafts right here, though they're concentric, they're one on top of the other. If this were a traditional manual transmission, this would all be one, Correct. one piece. Okay, so this is the input shaft for the transmission, and it's actually two shafts as we mentioned earlier, so one is around the other, and basically what happens is you've got these two clutches here. Now this right here, which splines to one of the shafts, this one, rotates the inner clutch, as you can see there, and then this outer piece of housing here rotates the outer clutch. So what happens is when you stick this on here, you can see that it only rotates with the upper shaft, and then as I take this and put that on top, that rotates with the other shaft. So that's how you're controlling the odd gears and the even gears with these two shafts. So here's a more detailed look at these multi-plate clutches. Now these are wet clutches, which means they are housed in oil, and as you can see here, you've got the alternating friction discs and plates. This is the inner clutch, and then you've got the same thing for the outer clutch. So here you can see the outer shaft, which rotates with the inner clutch, and then the inner shaft, which rotates with the outer clutch. As we rotate it around, we have the output shaft number one, and this has gears one, two, three, and four. Uh, these are the selectors that control the collars. They sit in the tubes right over here, and for example, that would be first gear, we're already engaged in second gear. So how do you know which gear you're looking at here? So when it comes to a manual transmission, the bigger in size the gear, the lower the gear number. So this is gonna be first gear, second gear is down at the bottom, then we go third, fourth, and five and six are actually on output shaft number two. Okay. As we rotate this around, we come around to the differential, and I set the uh, axle cup in here just to kind of give an example of where the axle would be in relation to this entire transmission. Now, we actually have the second half of the case completely removed, um, just so you guys can see this. Obviously, it's all in case you wouldn't be able to see anything if we had both cases installed. As we come around, here's output shaft number two. This has reverse, 
five and six. And they're actually different size collars, so we engage, this is actually a broken transmission, but we engage gears this way. Here's reverse engaged down there. Uh, this is your reverse shaft. Remember, we have to rotate the gears the opposite way when Correct. we're going backwards. backwards. Um, as we come back around, one really cool thing is there's these wheels all throughout these gear sets, and this actually lets the, um, the mechatronic unit know exactly where each position is and what's rotating at what speed. <laughs> and it's really fun to play with. <laughs> This is the selector that's used to select each gear. There's little pistons inside the case. One will move it up, and then on the corresponding side on the top, we'll move it down. And this piece right here is actually a, uh, a magnetic uh, position sensor, so the, uh, the mechatronic unit knows exactly where each selector is throughout the process. So you can see here we have first gear engaged. I'm actually turning the input shaft of the transmission. Um, this is actually input shaft one. And so here's the output going to the differential, which will then send power to the driven wheels. Right, so power flow is coming actually from the back here up to this gear. You can see at the very top of your screen that I'm turning to Sent gear one, this. down to the differential, and then out to the wheels. Your wheels would actually be here and then in the uh, opposite spot on the bottom of the screen. So if we're to run through, if we're to engage first gear, so everything's gonna be, nothing's gonna be selected. When we're selecting first gear, this collar here will engage first gear, and then you're sending power to the, the wheels with first gear engaged. Now, while you're doing this, as you're starting it to the higher RPMs and the clutch is anticipating you shifting to second, the second gear collar will engage while the first gear is still engaged, but remember the clutch that this second gear is engaged to is disengaged from the engine, whereas this one is engaged. So once you actually do shift gears, you tell the computer, hey, switch gears, you press on a paddle shifter, or whatever it may be, then this will disconnect, and all the while, your clutches are switching which one's sending power to this differential here. So this one will start receiving power while this one is still receiving power, and you'll kind of have this overlap of where you're always gonna be getting torque, but that torque's gonna to decrease from this one and increase to this one, and then send power to the driven wheels through this differential. And that is why a DSG will always shift faster than most drivers. Definitely better than a manual car or a automatic gearbox with traditional planetary gears, because you're always gonna have some torque being delivered, and you can pre-select the next gear up or the next gear down, uh, depending on what the computer thinks you're going to be doing next, and that allows you to have a much quicker shift. So what I have in front of me here is the mechatronics unit, and basically what this is responsible for is the logic for the transmission. So you may be wondering, how does it know which gear to pre-select? Uh, and there's some logic that goes into that, and basically some simple examples are, let's say you're in second gear and you're flooring it, the RPMs are increasing, it's gonna go ahead and pre-select the higher gear, third gear, so you can get into that one very quickly. Let's say you're in fifth gear and you're hard on the brakes, well then it knows to downshift for the next one, so it'll go ahead and pre-select fourth gear. And I think that really explains why there's some sort of misconceptions about, you know, this transmission itself, because this is a manual transmission that just happens to be automatically controlled. Correct. So that may explain why, you know, certain criteria of driving may, a driver may experience, you know, a, a delay or a weird shift because the computer brain right here can really only predict a driver's input to a certain point. Right, so if it pre-selects the wrong gear and you chose to go the other direction with the gear shift, then you may feel you know a slight delay because it has to compensate for that change. My experience, that really shows itself when you're accelerating and let's say the light turns red and you let off the gas and you know magically the light turns green really fast, you hit the gas again. That's when you really experience that mm -hmm. delay because the, the transmission computer thinks you're going to do one thing because it's seen, you know, a series of seconds go by with this input from the driver, and now the driver flips that on its head and mashes the throttle. Now the transmission has that split second of, uh, yeah. I don't know what to do. Oh, okay, now I'm good. Let's go. And, and that's, I think, where a lot of people sort of have this conception of the DSG being, you know, jerky or finicky or, or whatnot. Yep. So. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you know what to do. And thank you, Charles, for having me here. 
I flew all the way from Oregon to North all Carolina just to check this guy this out. This guy, I love and this guy. And if you haven't yet watched our video on the VR6, you should check that out. That's a great video. I think it broke the internet, by it the way. It broke the internet. It's better, way better than the Kardashians. Than, way better than that other, yeah. yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.